Hello guys, Miss Venere is here and today I'm very happy to greet you all on our official YouTube channel. Hopefully you're all excited to learn something new about ancient civilizations and as you have probably assumed from the title of this video, today we are going to talk about the origins of ancient Roman Empire. So actually, tell me, what do you know about ancient Roman Empire? Well, in first place, it was the greatest and the mightiest empire mankind has ever seen. In second place, it was so weak and vast that it stretched from Britain to Middle East. And finally, it lasted for nearly a thousand years. The early history of Rome is shrouded somewhere somewhat in mystery. There are several different stories telling how the city of Rome was founded. Some of uh, these stories are historical, meanwhile others are mythological. And according to legend, according to mythology, the city of Rome was founded in 753 BC by Romulus and Remus. Twins, uh, twin sons of the god Mars, the Roman god of war, and a Latin princess. The twins were abandoned on the Tiber River, but rescued and raised by a she-wolf. When the twins grew up, they decided to build a city near the spot, but unfortunately, Romulus killed Remus, so he decided to call the city after himself. But in reality, the myth is myth. And it was actually men, not immortals, who built the city. And they chose the spot, largely for its strategic location and fertile soil. And now let's have a look at these pictures. Like, for example, in the first image, we can see she wolf feeding twin, uh, twin brothers. And even today, if you travel to Rome, you can see um you can see it everywhere because uh shivel feeding twins became kind of symbol official symbol of rome in the second image you can see remulus and remus fighting over the sport over the lands okay so now let's talk about rome's geography we have already mentioned that it was very fertile and very good for settling so, the first Roman settlers came from a region surrounding Rome. They chose the spot for its mild climate, good farmland, and a strategic location. Rome was built on seven hills. During the day, the settlers farmed the plain. At night, they returned to their hill hilltop homes. Because it was much easier to defend themselves from enemies, the Ravi Tiber Tiber, sorry, was also very important source of water and silt. Later, the river provided a route for travel and trade, as the Tiber River connected Rome to the sea. Now let's have a look at its location. Do you see? This is actually the map of um, city of city of Rome, and as I mentioned before, here are our seven seven hills. Okay, now let's talk about first settlers. The earliest settlers on the Italian peninsula arrived in prehistoric times. From about 1000 to 500 BC, three groups inhabited the region and eventually battled for control. They were the Latins, the Greeks and the Etruscans. The Etruscans had seized control of Rome for a long time time and set Romans on their path to glory, transforming Rome from a spampy, mad hat village into a major and beautiful city. Moreover, they also marked the borders of ancient Rome. But unfortunately, in uh, 509, the Romans overthrew the last Etruscan king, blaming for, be be for being very unfair and very cruel toward them, and they formed a republic. A republic is a form of government in which citizens have the power to elect their own leaders. So, let's talk about early Romans. They seized the power and they started to build up their city. The early Romans lived by farming. 
But life on a Roman farm wasn't easy, because it was a very hard labor. They lived in simple homes made of mud and in extended families. So they, their existence was very humble and was very tiresome. But in Republic early days, every male citizen who owned land had to serve in army. Roman leaders believed that landowners would fight harder to defend the city. Landowners were also able to pay for their own equipment. The hard discipline and resistance of farmers turned them into strong fighters who later on conquered Italy and managed to extend the borders of the city. So, like in each uh, society, also Roman society was divided and split in several classes. Like in this case, we have two major classes, patricians on one side and plebeians on another side. The upper class patricians were wealthy landowners who owned all of the highest positions in government, so they were able to draw and approve the law. The plebeians, mostly farmers, they could vote, but they couldn't hold important government positions. The gap between two social groups caused tensions. Thus, the patricians passed a written constitution called the Twelve Tables and wrote 450 BC. The Twelve Tables established basic rights and duties for Roman citizens. Does it remind you something? Yeah, well done. This is Twelve Table was a blueprint for a present-day constitution that we all need to follow. So, let's talk about the Republican government, how it was organized. So, the Roman uh, leaders established a three-part government, means that the government itself was split into three, uh, three branches. Yes, so the first branch was the legislative branch represented by, presented by the Senate um, and it was a very powerful body that advised Roman leaders and most senators were patricians. Well, the second, uh, the second branch, uh, judicial, helped run the government and oversee the courts, helped make laws. And the last branch, executive, was presented by two consuls who led Rome's executive branch. They commanded army and directed government. Each consul had power to veto or overrule the others. By the way, do you know what is veto today? Oh, well done. There's a thumbs up and thumbs down. So if you like this video, please give me a veto up thumbs up and if you didn't like this video give me a thumbs down thank you so much for your attention that's all for today and hopefully we will meet up for uh, for another sequel of this topic later this week thank you please be safe enjoy your timing and see you soon bye bye